One of the more interesting historical things that got lost in time is Disney's River Country. River Country was an old-fashioned swimming hole that Disney promoted and had here at the Fort Wilderness Resort. In fact, the entrance to it still exists. It's right here. This is the ticket booth to it, and behind there is the uh, way you get into the, uh, the actual uh, water park. Now, of course, it's closed today. It's been closed for 20-odd years now, and it's totally off-limits, no trespassing. So I will not let leave from this spot right here. What I want to do is talk about this in a historical context. This was here when Walt Disney World first opened. I believe the uh, Fort Wilderness Campground opened about a year after the Walt Disney World Resort, for the most part after the Magic Kingdom, but it was here from the beginning. And it only closed in the 1990s, so I want to share with you the history of it. I'll leave it to others to go off and explore and look at what this was and actually go in there now. That's not my thing that I do, that's not me. What I want to do is just kind of talk about it historically and what was there. There were a couple of water slides, there was a lazy river, there were some other things, but it was all fed by Bay Lake. So we'll go over and we'll look at Bay Lake for just a moment and we'll get a sense of kind of how this all relates. So let's take a minute and take a look at the map. Of and River Country itself went all the way through and up to Bay Lake. A perspective on what the park looked like and how it laid out. And here's a model that was created of the original part of River Country with the water slides and the flumes that went around. Kind of neat and interesting that that still exists and we can see it. So there's Bay Lake right there, and this would be River Country right here in this area. And that was the ticket window we were just at right up there through the tree line. You can kind of see it just to give you a sense of where we are. So it kind of gives you an idea perspective wise of what it's all about and where it was located. And now that we've seen kind of the outside of the River Country Park from the perspective of Fort Wilderness itself, now let's take the boat over from the end of Fort Wilderness back to the Contemporary. And in that case, we'll be able to kind of pass by where the old river country was from the outside, from the lakeside. So as we go along here, we can kind of see where it used to be. You see the foliage has grown in a little bit. Now, since I made this video, they've actually taken down some of the foliage and begun demolition of the river country park. The concept is to create a new Disney Vacation Club property. So as you see in the video, the park featured a rustic wilderness theme complete with rocks and man-made boulders. It was described as an old-fashioned swimming hole. With a twist of Huckleberry Finn, the original title was Pops Willow Grove, but grew into Fort Wilderness's River Country. The park did feature a sandy bottom on the main part of the lake and had a unique water filtering system which used water from Bay Lake. And by creating an artificial dam, they were able to create that lake, create this little lagoon area. As far as the attractions that were here, you had the upstream plunge, a kidney-shaped clean water pool, slippery slide falls, two water slides that emptied into upstream plunge, kitty cove, a kid's zone with two large water slides and a cove. This area was targeted toward preteens. You had the barrel bridge, a bumpy bridge with barrels under it, similar to the one you have over at Tom Sawyer's Island. The Whitewater Rapids, a 330-foot long inner tube river, Bay Cove, a half-acre sand-bottom lake which featured a tire swing, boom swing, rope climb, and T-bar drop. Whoop and holler hollow. Those were two water slides that emptied into Bay Cove. 
And when you watch the video, you see people dropping off what, from what seems like a pretty fair distance to go into the water. You had Bay Bridge, Indian Springs, a very small splash zone with fountains spraying kids. This was targeted at children under eight. Cypress Point Nature Trail, a trail among trees by Bay Lake. Then there were pony rides, and you could also rent the Mercury mouse boats uh, right outside the area. River Country opened in 1976. Remember that Fort Wilderness opened a year or so before that, so River Country was a year later. And then it closed in for good in about 2001 during the recession. There was some opening and closing that happened around that time, but it pretty much closed for good around that time. Oh yeah, and don't miss the fact that Goofy used to show up in and around the Seven Seas Lagoon and the Bay Lake area and over into river country. And you'd see him actually swimming in the water and water skiing and doing all kinds of fun things. Today, that seems like a totally ridiculous notion, but back then, it was pretty cool. So why did River Country close? I don't think we, the public, will ever really know the reason. It's a lot of speculation and innuendo people have made up to think about why it might have closed. But here are some of the top reasons that we've been given that may or may not be part of the reason. And it may be an accumulation of several of these that caused Disney to rethink the idea of Fort Wilderness's River Country. The first is the brain-eating amoeba. There's a waterborne amoeba that lives in the lakes in Florida and actually can uh, get in through your nasal cavity and can cause uh, death. And there was one person who did die of that, presumably because they were in the, in the waters of Bay Lake. Possibly it was because of new laws around water parks and the way they had to be maintained and the safety features. Certainly alligators may have played a role. There may have been problems with filtration and or chlorination. Modern water parks are all chlorinated water. Certainly the size and capacity had something to do with it. It was a little bit small by water park standards. There were general safety concerns about the park itself and some of the things that guests were able to do that maybe they wouldn't have done in a more modern water park. There was a lot of competition with the newer water parks that Disney was creating, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. Of course, location and accessibility would have been issues. The location at the far end of Fort Wilderness, meaning you had to either get there by boat or come all the way through Fort Wilderness to get to it, did limit guests' ability to get to it. Accessibility was also an option based on the fact that there really were no easily accessible areas for people with physical disability. There was forever a plan to expand Fort Wilderness and to bring out more. The Wilderness Lodge itself, that idea had existed for a long period of time, so it's entirely possible that was on their radar even earlier than we knew. And then, of course, there's the economic downturn. And that is the story of River Country.